they are disappointed. They continue to feel devalued. So, you know, we have to continue. This is their message. We have to keep it going. Um, I feel things have got so bad, I don't really know what else to do to raise the issues because um, without fair pay, we've not got enough um, staff because people are leaving the profession because of paying conditions. And we just want to provide excellent care to our patients and that's what this is really about. We do this job to um, make people better and I just feel that actually now it's got so bad, I feel that we have to strive. I'm just trying to keep up with the cost of living is really hard, you know, and we all have our families, our children to pay for as well. Um, you know, and as you say, for, for people like yourself that have just qualified, I just don't know how you've done it. I think it's incredibly stressful. You know, for me it was a long time ago and it wasn't that situation. Uh, lots of people tried to be flexible, work in other clinical areas that were outside their comfort zone, um, actually, you know, felt that they were also putting themselves at risk by going to work to potentially take infections home to their families. And we did that because we want to give, we want to look after people. And I feel now that the government have just turned around and turned their backs on their health service and it doesn't make you feel very valued. When Brexit talks were happening there was going to be 350 million on the side of that bus for the NHS and we didn't see a dot of it um, and so uh, in fact we got more money from an old man walking around his garden uh, for a hundred laps so and uh, thank you Ga uh, Captain Tom. We haven't currently got a deal that we can say no to because they haven't even come to the table to discuss things with us they won't even enter conversations so it's just rude it's just outrageously rude <laughs>